What's Up Witches is Ray Raccoon and in honor of Halloween and the release of Hocus Pocus 2, I wanted to build the Sanderson Sisters Cottage. I promise not to have massive spoilers in this build if you haven't seen the movie yet, so don't worry about that. There are a few nods to the second movie, but nothing too spoily that you wouldn't see on like a movie poster. So when looking for references for the cottage, I really had to go back to the original Hocus Pocus movie since I wanted the house to look like the three witches had lived there and it not be the modern version that we see in the second movie. Well, it's more of like a store, whatever. Oh, also, I didn't know this, but there's a cute Lego set that I found online of the Sanders and Sisters cottage and I may have to add it to my collection of Legos. Oh well, it's an iconic house. How could I not? Anyways, I'm very grateful to have some of the DLCs like Cottage Living, Vampires, Spellcasters, and Werewolves because all of those packs came with items that fit the creepy, witchy vibe that this house needs. All the occult packs have a special place in my heart, so it was great to be able to use them in this build. Perfect. Funny though, I didn't use any items from the Paranormal pack or spooky stuff. I just didn't find anything that I would need wasn't already covered in the occult packs because those packs have such great items. Oh, and I mean Cottage Living was a god save for having this water wheel that I needed from the outside of the house. I don't know what I would have done. I would have probably had to make some custom content or download it. Let's be real. I'm not making custom content. Since this house has been around for a few hundred years, it was important to age it. And a lot of houses in The Sim 4 do have that modern feel, but this one obviously needed a little bit of aging. So we used all the wall cracks that you can find in like werewolves and vampires and a lot of the vines from those packs as well. I mean, it just felt right. The grounds are unkept and a lot of the terrain paint was used because it could really change the whole feel of the lot in a build and it's something that a lot of people don't use or they underuse it. Feel free to just go nuts with terrain paint. You can always just reset it or erase anything. I mean, just keep going. Since this cottage is in the woods, I had to make it look like the outside was definitely not that priority. And I know if I stumbled across this house, I would not be trying to find out who lived there. Speaking of deep in the woods, this lot is in Forgotten Hollow. Since it has that woodsy, misty feel, it just seemed like a perfect fit. Also, who doesn't want to be neighbors with Laddy Daddy? <laughs> But in Forgotten Hollow, there's a public bathroom in the middle courtyard that all the houses have access to. So, oh, and the best part of that is you don't have to go through a loading screen to use that bathroom. So, no one has to pee on themselves. Just run across the courtyard. I did add a pee bush on the lot. So, if you decide to take this off my gallery and place it into the world of your own, you don't have to worry about finding a public restroom. You got the bush in the back. So when decorating the outside of this cottage, I really thought I'd have to use a lot of the debug items from like Werewolves Pack because it's a logging town deep in the woods or Forgotten Hollow with like the dead trees and whatnot. But I actually found a lot of great items not in debug, which I'm super happy about because I don't really like always having to use debug items. I like using what's available in the game so that everyone can kind of use it without having to put debug back in your game. I wanted to add a lot of lighting to the house to make sure that it had that purple vibe from the outside. Because every picture I found had the smoke coming out of the chimney with that purple haze and the attempt was there, but we just went with the purple spotlights kind of in the front. I had to build the loft section of this house to a point where it looked like it was kind of a second thought by adding the beams of wood that would hold up that second story because construction was not the greatest in the 1800s, I'm guessing. Though this house has been standing a long time, so I'm guessing those beams have been doing a good job. I wanted everything inside to be kind of on that darker, woodsy feel because it is a cabin after all. And though I already have a ladder to the second floor, I believe in the actual movie there is stairs up there. But I wanted to make sure that I added two different ways to get up there because I did clutter the hell out of the loft section. I tried to stick with just candle-based lighting, mainly because electricity was not a thing back then, but candles, we got. I didn't have anything close to the black flame candle, though, so I'm kind of upset about that. 
Oh, well, I guess this was before that they had to make the black flame candle to bring themselves back. Let's go with that. I put a lot of the moon references up with that beautiful mirror of the half moon. The orbs, the potions, the case where they could hold their wands, though. The Sanderson sisters don't use wands because their magic comes from their fingertips. I didn't want to overdo it with the cobwebs inside the house because I feel like that just becomes cheap haunted housey and not so much just they like spiders so it's not a big deal if the spiders make a home inside their house. I did add all of the werewolf ancient relics because I wanted to pay homage to where werewolves came from because that is my favorite pack in The Sims 4. And if you didn't know, werewolves came from spellcasters. That's right. Werewolves came from spellcasters. That's what Greg came from. And I feel like the Sanderson sisters would have known Greg, so they're like, yeah, we'll have all your items just to pay homage to you. I mean, how could you not? Greg's just perfect. I added a bunch of brooms, some crystals, little knickknacks, lots of clutter. There is a working kitchen. So refrigerators, stove, countertops. Because if you are playing in this house, I want you to be able to feed your Sims. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe once you download this off my gallery, you'll decide to make the three Sanderson sisters yourself. Or I'm sure there's custom content somewhere that you can just download. I mean, I might just do that because... I'd rather have them in my game. Just adds a little bit of flair. The only issue is uh, only one witch can sleep at a time. And, uh, I mean, are you really going to be sleeping as a spellcaster? You got stuff to do. You can just make a potion of plentiful needs and just be good to go while you're trying to brew the potion to suck the lives out of little children. Yeah, that's the plan. For sure. And like I mentioned a few times, I'm going to put this up in my gallery. My gallery tag is up on the screen. So if you want it, go grab it, add it to your game, and get your spooky on. I mean, it's Halloween season. How can we not celebrate a house as cool as this? If you enjoyed this build, let me know down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And if you have any other suggestions of maybe other haunted houses, more iconic Halloween houses... Let me know, because I'm in the building mood. And Halloween's around the corner, and October is my favorite month. So maybe we uh, spice it up and do a little serial killer house. What do you guys think? If you're new to the channel, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, because you don't want to miss out on any more fun Sims 4 content. I really hope you enjoyed this build. And with that being said, I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.